Thank you for tuning in to Radicards TV on Radicards.com. I'm your host, Patrick Greeno, and this is my buddy, Dan G. What's up, Pat? Hey, Dan. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. 2020, Happy New Year to you. Man, that was a, a good, that was an interesting decade. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It was a great decade. Yeah. You know, a lot of growth. I did a lot of cool stuff in that decade. I, I'm proud of things that I've accomplished. But man, the things I had to overcome, my gosh, yeah. tough. <laughs> I acquired a lot of cards. Oh, and, yeah. Um, had a son. Well, I mean, I didn't have the son, but my son was born. And, yeah. You know, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. I was really aggressive in collecting last decade. Like, really aggressive. Um, and I had that aggressiveness started years prior to right. that but i had you know since i was out finally out of business school finally out of college uh, before my ucla stuff um i was like well i want to focus on getting as much thomas stuff as i can before he hits the hall of fame right and then he gets into the hall of fame and i'm like oh phew now his stuff is so expensive right. that i'm like man, i'm glad that i've acquired what i have because i wouldn't be able to jump in the market now um knowing how expensive things are but anyway neither here nor there what'd you bring for us today um, so I just got this card today. Uh, as I was telling you, I worked a, uh, a Twitter deal. Sure. Um, and it's for a 2017 Gypsy Queen. Okay. Alex Bregman. It says rookie on it, you know, but. Well, it's yeah, 2017. Was, yeah. So that's his rookie year. Right. So it's rookie year card. But he has stuff like after and before that all had those logos. Really? It's really hard to, yeah. It's really hard to follow. I know that 2017 was his debut year. Right. So everything well, I, I, pre I think, was pre rookie card correct. status. And I think, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I mean, there was just it was like 2018. There was stuff with the rookie really? card logo with him. Yeah, that's odd. Yeah. I mean, there was it was really weird yeah. to try and figure it out. If that is the but, case, he's not the first to have that. Right. There have been many guys. Right. Dale Murphy being one of the earlier dudes who's on two seventy seven seventy eight. He's rookie card status both right. years. Well, this is the pink. Um, Lou Pinella version. He has a 64, a 68, and a 69. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> right, go so, ahead. So this 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 version is uh, numbered to 150. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot about it. Um, I don't. I didn't own any Alex Bregman autos until this point. Okay. Um, and it was kind of an impulse thing uh, because you know he's a hometown guy, and part of me was like, well, I mean, he kind of fits a lot of what I like. You know, I like the Gypsy Queen brand, and I, I like the parallel aspect of it, and I like that it's Alex Bregman, and it's on card auto, right? I, I really don't care a whole lot that, that it might be rookie year or rookie, you know. Buy the card. Yeah. Right? So I bought the card. The card. Based off of the, the aspects that I liked. So right. I thought it was pretty cool. That is cool. So, um, you know, I thought the guy on Twitter gave me a fair deal. Good. He threw in some McGuire cards on top of that. Love it. And I, for the life of me, I wish I could give him a shout out, but mm -hmm. I can't remember his handle. So, so yeah, whoever helped yeah. him with this deal, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. How about Appreciate that? It. Right. <laughs> and you know, so. it's, you know, it's, it's great that we have these platforms to get to know collectors in yeah, a different sure. way. Um, I, I closed the deal last year for a league card on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, and it was one I'd wanted and it made the deal made sense to both of us. So I was glad to get that done. I gotta be honest, though, I don't spend enough time doing that mm -hmm. on those platforms, like negotiating and closing deals for cards on, on those platforms. I'm generally, a lot of my time is spent on eBay, but right. it's just because of a time thing. I don't oh, have, I, I understand. it's a time like limitation. Yeah. Um, I think I think Twitter has, has a definite place in the hobby. Totally, I mean, absolutely. Part of what I like about it is, you know, it's, it, it updates sometimes by the minute and people who I did not know were on the radar of other people's lists of wants or needs, yeah. you know, based off of popularity, you know, I think it's a good place to get that information. And I'm glad that there are people that, you know, try to move some cards. And, yeah. And they're pretty fair. I mean, I, I've, uh, I've read some horror stories, you know, but for the most part, uh, that's that's everything. And I'll, yeah, you're going to find that in every walk of life. I mean, Everywhere there's commerce happening, yeah. you're going to find Bad deals. some amount of skullduggery. Yeah. Yeah. And so you just have to like, you know, do your research, buyer beware. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you can, it, you can work on, do your homework and try to dodge as much of that as you can. But it's still going to find you. Well, it's, it's just, just, it's just, just you play the game. You're yeah. going to, you're going to lose a couple of times. It's just part right. of it, sadly. Right. You know, it's like, I, I talk about eBay, how, you know, I'm approaching the 5,000 feedback mark and 
of all those. And granted, I've transacted more than that because that's just who's left me feedback. Right. Um, and so of all the transactions, most of them, a, a gross most of them have been positive, like a very small right. percentage of negative outcomes. So I, I, I realize like, you know, by and large, most people are basically good yeah. and aren't out to get you. Yeah. And so this is like, you know, it, you have to kind of just, but again, if you're not feeling it, then that's fine. If you are, you know, pursue it, whatever, kind of go with your, your gut on a lot of that right. stuff. So this is no, a cool yeah. card. I like the Gypsy Queen run. The, the artwork is really nice. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It's like detailed, you know, I like For that. Sure. Are you going to go after another Bregman of this run? Probably not. Mm -mm. Um, I mean, I mean, think, you know, I, I, I side PC Bregman, you, do, you okay. know, because yeah. I mean, we saw him play here in yeah. town and, you know, um, always thought he was pretty good and, you know, he continues to perform. Um, you know, he still has family here. So I, I like that aspect of him. Um, but I think as far as like high end stuff, I, th I think usually more in the lines of, you know, rookie cards, you know, Bowman, uh, Chrome, yeah. that type of thing. Right. So uh, if I'm going to, if I'm going to purchase anything else, I think I'm going to go in that direction. Yeah. Right. Uh, I do put his stuff aside and occasionally I'll trade for things or pick up things that are reasonably be priced yeah here in albuquerque though it's it's pretty tough because you know everybody local guy they try to gouge you every chance they get so <laughs> it's robin yount in milwaukee yeah. it's like uh well that the location specific demand is always going to be superior correct when i was living in fullerton it was always the angels stuff that sold really well right and people would get commons just to get them signed at the stadium. I mean, like everything across the board, Angels did really well. Granted, right. some of the older guys retired, not as difficult to, not as easy to to get um, signed or whatever. You wouldn't see as huge demand there, but there there was always a demand for Angels and Dodgers right. stuff. So I, I get that. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Glad you brought that by. Sure. Yeah. And you, I guess that's exactly how you acquired it in the mail. That's pulled it out of the envelope <laughs> that way. <laughs> All right, so we're talking today 1999 Ultra Platinum Medallion. Move on. So this was an impulse buy. <laughs> okay. You know, suggested items like you bought this one, and then there's this like run of whatever right. suggested other things you could look at. That was this, and it doesn't fall into really anything that would end up on the museum arm. This won't go on the museum. This is just like a, I have a, a box for my '90s stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, my, my stuff goes from like vintage to junk wax to the nineties and I have boxes for each chunk and this will go in my nineties box. And so that's that this was inexpensive, but when I saw it, I was like, oh, I'll keep an eye on it. I've always had a soft spot for Mo Vaughn. I've always liked them. Um, and this is a platinum medallion parallel number 99. Uh, these are really cool. They got that silver finish on them and then you've got the seal number on the back uh across there on the bottom i always i've, I've always dug this uh it's like a fuzz it's like a dog hair there i've always dug this set because of the design i like the platinum background with the 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 player mm -hmm. shot in the forefront like that with the color it just really works but um when i saw this i was like well i'll just keep an eye on it and see where it goes and it didn't you know it was it was, it was like a bargain it was like a pop display purchase at the best buy shopping line right like all the they, they weave you through the you know the snake run and there's like all kinds of other trinkets and things to buy that's kind of like how i took this was well i'm on my way out to check out i may as well look at this other car that was recommended to me um i don't pc move on i think i may still have a section of his in my collected players mm -hmm. box but a lot of his stuff got filtered into these other boxes how i organize my cards now so but this is going to go right like organized in that same way but I just I just dig these ninety nine ultra platinum medallion parallels. It's not particularly really a set I collect per se. It's just great player, great card, great era, great set. I I just I, I just thought this was a good ad and it was like something like seven dollars. It was cheap. So do you remember when ninety nine ultra came out? Do you remember when platinum medallions came out? So ninety nine ultra. Um so like ninety I want to say 97, yeah. 98, 99, uh, maybe into 2000. I really kind of st stepped out of cards. Uh -huh. I didn't get, I, I didn't stop with them, 
but the volume in which I was purchasing was significantly lower than any other years. It was. Yeah, I mean, you know, I would periodically buy a pack or two. Yeah. But it was mostly, um, you know, finishing up with college. And yeah. I was out of the hobby in 99. Properties and stuff, yeah. Yeah. So in 99... I was I had gone to the Junior Olympics for Taekwondo. I got my black belt the year prior, and then I went to the Junior Olympics that summer in '99. And um, I was so I was out of the a hobby. I think at that time, I was more into like skateboarding and video games and just uh, other stuff. I, I wasn't into cards. I had as, as like the beginning of my hiatus because I had left the hobby toward at the end of '98, right. and um, so I had missed this run. And Platinum Medallions came out in 97 Ultra. Uh, Ultra that was their inaugural bl- uh, run of this stuff. And so when they came out, I wasn't buying Ultra. It was, wasn't was one of those like cheap boxes on the on that table. You weren't finding them at the supermarket. Yeah, they just, yeah. you know, the stuff I was buying packs wise was my price point was like three bucks, below three bucks. Right. You know, I just, I wasn't buying packs that were high in and Ultra just wasn't available. I just didn't even think about it. when it, I mean, there's so many... You know, you, you, when you're young and you're collecting, you don't pay attention to what is on the market. You're right. just like, whatever you're looking at and it's there, you're going to... might be interested in it. Right. Um, and so when 99 Ultra came out, I, I was out at that time. So I had when I circled back in 20, 2003, um, I could say 2003. Right. So uh, when I came back, um, I had to uh, learn about whatever I missed I have a lot of memories of getting Movon stuff in the in the late 90s from like um the one I specifically remember was 96 SPX those like die cutted right with the gold parallels you could get mm-hmm. so I remember pulling the gold Movon and being like yes awesome and I remember having that in my box in fact I have this vivid memory of remembering that when I was at the park and I was like remembering um, I had a memory of a friend of mine who lived near me and we'd go down to like the shop down there and we'd, we'd go and buy packs and I remember pulling Mo and Mo at the time was kind of a hot shot. Right. I mean, he's a pretty good player for his, his time uh, with the Red Sox. He was pretty dominant. So that's kind of like circles me back into like occasional, I'll, I'll, I'll look at random Mo Vaughn stuff. Be like, Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I, I rarely buy any of it. This is like very impulsive. I, I don't, I typically don't just buy stuff because it's cool or because it's rare. It has to fall into certain categories in the way I collect. And that helps me um, keep my my spending in line. Yeah, see, I have that problem. I buy stuff because I think it's cool. <laughs> That's, but if, That's you, cool. if you if you tally I out know. over the course of a couple months how much money you've oh. put into stuff that's been cool. You're like, yeah. man, I spent $380 on cool stuff when I could have put that towards some one really nice item. That's the way my brain thinks. Yeah, I, I do. I don't do that anymore because <laughs> then it takes the fun out of, and you know, the collecting. Yeah. I, you know, at one point I was like, maybe I should keep track of how many retail packs I buy and what that costs. Eh. I was like, nah, that's pass. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> just have fun buying the packs tear just, them open right. with kids and, <laughs> and honestly if it's not a big burden on your finances who cares yeah. anyway so this is 1999 Ultra Platinum Medallion Movon serial number to 99 cool. really cool stuff I like these a lot I love the like hollow foil they put on these this is just a cool design so there you have it Danny and final thoughts I'm good <laughs> okay alright thank you for tuning in to Radicards TV and Radicards.com I'm your host Patrick Greeno and until next time Enjoy collecting. Take care. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thank you. Enjoy collecting.